Nature's a killer, especially if it's your job. To save lives in the Sahara. Wrangle with one of Africa's biggest killers. Or hunt for emeralds in deadly caves. Which extreme job is likely to get you first? Across the desert, push extreme sports to new limits. The terrain is rough, hot, and hostile. The Western Sahara in Morocco is a biker's paradise. This is the Touareg Rally, 3,000 kilometers in eight days through the desert. For some people, it's just a job. Klaus Spohler has been a top rally paramedic since 1976. He now runs his own company from his home in Germany. And he knows what sharp instincts you need to survive in this job. Unfortunately, someone was killed a few years ago in Tunisia. A young motorbike rider had a really bad accident, a broken neck and a fall. He crashed almost at our feet. We were only about five minutes away. But unfortunately, when we arrived at the scene, all we could do was make his death more comfortable. The desert is murderous when used as a waste rate, at speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour, nine hours a day. If the machine doesn't give up, the body surely will. euros a year. Klaus's job is to follow the races and patch up the wounded and dying. He needs to be an expert on four wheels to keep up, not to mention treat every kind of injury. But Klaus has inside knowledge of the business. In 1992, I took part in the Munich to Marrakesh rally. I just drove a normal cross-country car. When I look back at all those years and compare it to driving the 160,000 euro car that I now have, I feel really proud of it. He started rally driving in his teens. Now he does it for the thrill of the challenge to arrive in time to save lives. This gizmo here runs from a car battery that is charged by the car's motor. If a patient's heart stops, it gives a shock that starts the heart again. Dawn brings Klaus's first emergency. The biker can walk and talk, but he's hurting. Martin, give me a shout if the effects of the pain ever start to wear off. A skilled paramedic must drive and monitor the patient simultaneously. I just went up a little hill and the other side of the pole right, which made my back wheel pop up, so I overturned. I reckon I've got a few broken ribs or something. Are the painkillers wearing off now? We've got another one. Can't take this much longer. Let me know if it gets really bad and I'll stop and give you something. Okay, I, I should be all right. One patient successfully delivered, but there's a code red out in the desert. But where? Send me the coordinates so I can put them in the computer. Disaster strikes. The onboard GPS fails amid dunes that stretch for thousands of kilometers and rise to 300 meters. If there's any more news, just call me on the radio. I repeat, we can't get it at the moment. Klaus races against the golden hour. The critical 60 minutes after an accident when injuries can turn fatal. This job is all about juggling the stress of medical emergencies with your own mechanical problems. I'll let the tire pressure down one bar so we won't sink in the sand so deep. His luck changes. A backup rider 
Canada gets there to administer basic first aid. Klaus may be a trained paramedic, but out here, the job is more complicated and needs knowledge in desert survival. One of the biggest cops is heat stroke. Irrational and hyperactive behavior is the kiss of death. The rider has broken a femur, the longest bone in the body. Klaus must immobilize the fracture and kill the pain. Next, he assesses whether to call in a helicopter. It helps if you've once been a rally driver. The nearest airport is 160 kilometers away, so Klaus must now don yet another hat. Ambulance driver. It won't be an easy journey. Rain makes the two hour drive even more hazardous, and the patient must be monitored closely. He's under anaesthetic and could choke at any time. The flying ambulance is delayed by five hours. Klaus's 35 years experience give him the confidence to keep the sedation going, rather than risk the patient falling unconscious. Midnight, and he gratefully hands over to a new team. The job is done and you can look forward to three hours sleep. Not bad for this kind of extreme trade. Another day at the office. But why does he do it? When you fall in love with the desert, you'll keep coming back again and again. It's a fascinating place that will be with you for life. ways to flirt with death. The mines of southern Brazil contain treasures that people kill for, still to come. But first, it's one of the deadliest animals in Africa. It lives in rivers and kills 200 people a year. Said hippopotamus, you clearly know your bushcraft. But could you catch them for a day job? It may sound strange, but to do this, you'll need to be a builder and a diplomat. You'll see why later on. The hippo weighs more than the average car and can run at 30 kilometers per hour. And they can only be caught at night. Dr. Alex Lewis is a zoologist. Vet and hippo wrangler. He lives in Hood Struat, South Africa, but he runs an office in the bush, so the best way to get to work is by air. Working up here in the Limpopo Valley, uh, catching some hippos. Unfortunately, the rain in the last couple of years hasn't been quite up to the normal amount, so there's very little grass on the ground left for the animals. Uh, hippo are big grazers, so. Uh, they don't, they don't have much food left. Alex's primary task is to move the animals to safer areas. His business partner and fellow hippo wrangler is Charles Jones, bushman and boma builder. 
combining their very different skills. Together, they've saved thousands of animals. Charles and I work really well together. We do a lot of problem animal uh, work together. He's got a magic wealth of uh, wildlife knowledge that, uh, and hands-on experience. You know, He doesn't have it out of a book. He has it from catching the thing or working with it. Or he's a bushman. You know? ah, strong. Should hold the hippo. If you go into water and you don't know they're there, they're quite territorial. But uh, most of the time, I mean, you encounter a hippo, they'll give way. And as long as you don't make them angry and make them fight, they're very passive, actually. That if you piss them off, they, they'll kill you very easily. And here's the proof. It's from a hippo's tooth. We bang the door, hit the door. You see how he's bent it in here? And he put his tooth through there. It's a big job with big game, mixing science and hard graft. But the job also requires a business mind, working out how to make hippos pay for themselves in the eyes of local farmers. Alex, there's only two hippos on the dam, and we've got one little baby here that if we do not catch it, it's, it's definitely going to die. I don't know why it's on its own. It's way too young. I'd guess it's about three months old. And uh, if we don't catch this thing, the crocodiles are going to catch it, or it's going to die of starvation, one of the two. You also need to be a pilot with your own chopper. It's the only way to react fast. We've got about a four hour drive up to the Limpopo Valley, and uh, hopefully we'll get there in time. Uh... Alex and Charles make it. There's always the threat of poachers out to kill hippos for their teeth. Unlike with elephants, taking hippo ivory isn't illegal. They want to save the baby, but there's also an adult male in the same area. Can they nab them both? And so that's going to be a little bit tricky just to make sure that he doesn't kill the little guy, even just by mistake. Hippos are nocturnal feeders on land with excellent night vision. So you'll need the latest night vision cameras to stay one step ahead. Patience is definitely a virtue in this trade. It can take three months to catch one, but Charles and Alex have got a single night. Both male and baby hippo skirt Charles's cage, or boma, at the back of the truck. Come on, man. Uh, go for the one's in. That's got to be two in. Okay, let's try to close it. Nick. Now trapped, the male panics. Sure. I'm too close to this guy. We can't have I see. I have a funny problems here. They're biting the baby. Let's get out of here. They fear for the baby's life. <laughs> Coaxing a 3,000 kilo hippo into a small cubicle is a fine art. It's all about knowing how the animals react, a skill that must be learned on the job. Come, come, come. Yes, he's been donors before this boy. Come, 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 come. Come on. He'll load now. Come on. Be quiet, he's about to load. Come, 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 come. Up, 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 up,
The next day, the ultimate payoff for this 40,000 euros a year trade. The adult male gets the last word. <laughs> Just happy it hit my truck on the big strong spot of it and not my car in the soft spot. Was that the revenge? Another five hours on the road and Alex deposits baby in a nursery for full veterinary care. The downside of this job, possibly becoming one of the 200 people a year killed by hippos. The upside, knowing that because of you, a young life now has a chance. Quite happy that the little guy's climbed off happily now, which is great because she's going to struggle to, to fit in any other group with adults. The risk of her being killed is a, is a little too high. Somebody's going to give him intensive treatment and make sure she lives, and if she has to still take the bottle, that she'll get a little bit of that. With the right mix of instinct and training, working with hippos can give you a huge high. But beware, you need that certain X factor to work out in the wild. Like our next job. Fancy abseiling down 120 metres into a mine shaft that could collapse at any moment. You might, if it was the only way to get to the treasure. For Andreas Gerr, 52, it's all part of the job description. He's an internationally recognised gemstone dealer, chasing a childhood dream to unearth the ultimate jewel. Would he find it here in Brazil? The mining world of the southern state of Minas Gerais is like a modern-day Wild West. A frontier where people from all over the world come hoping to get rich. But Andreas must watch his back. Being paranoid can help in this job. Trust no one. Except your guide and agent, like Cosmo. What's going on here? Tell me. Look. He have a new a new line uh -huh. yesterday. Uh -huh. Will you go down with me to the no, to the underworld? Me no. You? Okay, me no. No? No. Are you sure? Um, yes. Pede alguma coisa para subir ou descer. Fala alguma coisa aí. Don't talk yet. Okay. Cost me. Goodbye, my friend. Take care. No worry. He's a good people. Watch my money. Having left his money and passport at the top, Andreas upsails down one of the hundreds of mines in this area. This is a filthy, dangerous and unregulated environment, but it's the only way to inspect new strands of stone. So here you can clearly see the scene that Cosme is talking about. The end of the tunnel is a dangerous place to be. These supports help keep the stone in place. Now we just need to follow the seam up to the end to see the area that they've just detonated. 65 million years ago, beryllium, aluminium silicates and chrome produced a quirk of nature, emeralds. By rights, they shouldn't even exist because these two elements occur in completely different places in the Earth's crust. Finding a seam like this one makes you want to carry on. All of this section is worthless. It'll just be mined out or thrown away. But down here, they think they might be able to find emeralds. A gem dealer needs to know his geology, point one. Point two, learn how to stay ahead of your competitors, even if that means risking falling rocks, gas explosions and asphyxiation. So is it worth it? Back on the surface, dump piles churn out a few small gems. But Andreas knows his clients in Europe only want the best. 
travels north to sample the local market. Negotiation is where all the trouble can start. There are bargains to be had, but the wrong move or attitude and shopping can turn nasty. Muggings, murders, intimidation. Both miners and dealers risk their lives for the stones. Having a good face for poker helps if you want the deal to close in your favour. Finally, he finds something worth spending over 10,000 euros on. One of my clients, Miss Duke, is a well-known jewellery designer. I reckon she'll like the stone and the colour, so I'm going to buy it now. This rough-cut trade is fuelled by the grapevine. Andreas follows news that a mine nearby is rich with amethyst crystals. grow inside gas bubbles in magma, the molten part of the Earth's crust. Over time, they can grow into crystals surrounded by a stone hull, called a geode. A borehole offers a peak. This could be something really big. There should be some water in it, so let's put in a hose. It's 150 million year old water. Oh my god, I've got to try it. Andreas checks for cracks which would devalue the stone. Then the bargaining begins. 1,500, he say now. He started with 1,800. Amethyst can fetch up to 10,000 euros per kilo. Staying ahead of the market, knowing how to network, these are vital skills in this job. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Now, to break open the treasure chest. It's good, but what's it worth on the international market? Andreas plays his cards close to his chest. This is my piece. It's a beautiful piece. I, I really do like it. It has great size, great colour. Ricardo will buy that too. And the best news of all, he's alive and well to go gem hunting another day. jobs. Three ways to let nature try and kill you. If you know what you're doing, even in the world's biggest desert, and killer hippos aren't so bad, but dealing in rare gems. This is one trade where you'd better watch your back. Euros a year, 
Klaus's job is to follow the racers and patch up the wounded and dying. He needs to be an expert on four wheels to keep up, but push extreme sports to new limits. The terrain is rough, hot and hostile. The Western Sahara in Morocco is a biker's paradise. This is the Touareg Rally, 3,000 kilometers in eight days through the desert. For some people, it's just a job. Klaus Spooler has been a top rally paramedic since 1976. He now runs his own... Nature's a killer, and especially if it's your job. To save lives in the Sahara. Wrangled with one of Africa's biggest killers. Or hunt for emeralds in deadly caves. Which extreme job is likely to get you first? across the desert company from his home in Germany. And he knows what sharp instincts you need to survive in this job. Unfortunately, someone was killed a few years ago in Tunisia. A young motorbike worker had a really bad accident, a broken neck and fall. He crashed almost at our feet. We were only about five minutes away. But unfortunately, when we arrived at the scene, all we could do was make his death more comfortable. Four, three, two, one. Stop. Not to mention treat every kind of injury. But Klaus has inside knowledge of the business. In 1992, I took part in the Munich to Marrakesh rally. I just drove a normal cross-country car. When I look back at all those years and compare it to driving that 160,000 euro car that I now have, I feel really proud of it. He started rally driving in his teens. Now he does it with the thrill of the challenge to arrive in time to save lives. 